the next one here. It's the same old Titans. Titan Tim coming Ooh. back. Oh, it's the same I, old Titans. Uh, that gummit Titan. That yeah, gummit, I, wait, this is what happens when you draft Will Levis and not a ball boy. Like we heard Hennon all Hooker. summer long that this team is going to look all different, all sorts of different, all this mess. And then what we got, we got the same old Titans week one. That gummit. That's, I mean, it's a lot of what you heard. I saw even Mike Herndon, who we love, friend of the show, friend of mine, saying that like oh, the Titans don't look all that different after week one. I, I couldn't disagree with that more. And I alluded to this a little bit on Monday, but I wanted to hammer the, the point home here. And if you're saying same old Titans in the sense that they like it was kind of chaos and you were nervous the whole time and then they lost a close game, I get I get the general sentiment to be like, oh, same old Titans. Sure, whatever. But in terms of things that fans were asking for, the past, at least last season, but the, I'd say the at least in the Todd Downing era and in the last couple of seasons, what were things you wanted to see from this team? God, we got to have more creativity offensively. Dude, you got it in week one. Tim Kelly was was doing what you were asking of him as a creative, different play caller. You could argue that he got a little too creative at times. So, like, I, you got the creativity. It was not mundane. How many times in this game did you see people being like, oh, there we go, run, run, pass. Like, first and second down, we're running the ball. It's so predictable. You didn't see that. That, that wasn't a thing. There were times they were going empty on first down, on second and long. Like, this was something that we saw from the Titans that people were asking for already. What else? We, we, we've seen people asking for a pass-heavier offense. You got it. It was a lot of interceptions. So, like, you know, maybe a careful what you wish for situation there. But you got it. This team passed the ball a good deal. It was not a crazy run-heavy offensive game plan. That's not what happened out there on the field. Um, your offensive skill players... We're not just healthy and on the field. That's, you know, that's a big one right there. But they were getting open. They were playing well. Again, DeAndre Hopkins played a fine game. Traylon Burks and Chigakonko, especially if you go back and rewatch or you watch the, the coaching film, they were getting open. They were playing well. You know, the, the, uh, Ty J Spears out snapping Derrick Henry, freaking people out in that regard. I, I think that's an outlier situation. I'm not too concerned about that in particular, but a, a big feature part of this offense already and playing well, getting open, having a walk-in touchdown. That if there's a better pass, he would have had a walk-in touchdown. A nice run to the the left side, getting around the edge and showing off that speed, being a really nice, refreshing one-two punch to Derrick Henry's thunder and being that lightning this team needed out of the backfield. And then defensively, it wasn't a, a change, but you, why would you want one? This Titans defense has been really good. Um, maybe I'd say the number one thing you can talk about is the secondary is same old Titans. And we're going to talk about that take next. Um, but yeah, that's really the only thing where it feels like the same old, Hey, special teams, Craig Ackerman for as much crap we, as we give him and he deserves all of it. Truly this week. He doesn't this week. I thought special outside of the, the blocked punt where that's just a, a missed assignment. It, it, it's that's a bad play. They, they, they played well. I thought the, the special teams were perfectly fine. I have no notes for Craig Ackerman besides let's, you know, not get punts blocked. It's, it's kind of, I think blocked punts are more of like, if, if you're getting a blocked punt every week, then we can talk about it, but that feels like more of a, a fluke thing than anything. So again, I, I think that actually the only thing you should really be mad about same old Titans is Ryan Tannehill threw three interceptions. Like every, like you got a lot of change and you lost the game because Ryan Tannehill threw three interceptions. It's, I think it's really that simple, but I think it's reductive and wrong and dumb to say it's the same old Titans. I give it, I give it a 10 out of 10 on the on the heat index truly because i think it's i think it's dumb and it's wrong um it's it, it is a, the combo of factually incorrect and unappreciative of you you've got a lot of what you asked for you just you had a frustrating game because your quarterback couldn't protect the ball yeah and then we can move on here to our final titans one and you touched on it a little bit but uh the take that tim kelly was a problem on sunday yeah, I touched on this a bit, but I, I thought that Tim Kelly was great. I give this a, a 9 out of 10 on the Hot Read Heat Index. I think it's a hot take. I think it's a bad take. Tim Kelly, again, he was he's people were super mad about Ryan Tannehill not just throwing interceptions, but there were two plays in particular, the trick play that schemed open Chig, and then the Tajay out of the backfield play that schemed him open for a walk-in touchdown. He schemed two touchdown looks at least. He also schemed Chig Okonkwo wide open deep, deep down the field on that Chris Moore interception where Tannehill makes the wrong read and misses Chig just underneath Chris Moore for a massive gain to inside the 15-yard line. 
he schemed open so many looks. There were three or four different plays where Traylon Brooks is, there's one in particular, Traylon Brooks running up the left side of the field with his hand up. Hey, I'm open. Throw it to me. No one's on me. Tannehill misses it. He was scheming dudes open. He was being creative. He wasn't being reductive or predictable or way too run heavy. He arguably went away from Derrick Henry too much. I think that's the biggest critique is that you need to rely on your best playmaker in Derrick Henry a little bit more. Maybe you were overdoing the creativity, but I understand where you're coming from. Like Tim Kelly was pitching gas in that game and Ryan Tannehill couldn't execute. I think the take is crazy that Tim Kelly was a problem. I saw one, I think it's a Texas fan, be like, well, I told you Titans fans, I told you when they hired him. When they hired Tim Kelly in the spring, dude can't call red zone offense. In the red zone, again, it, it was procedural issues. It was execution issues. Did we see this team take a step back in terms of the red zone efficiency based on historical precedent? Yes, they, they've been a team the past couple of seasons that when they get into the red zone, it's an automatic seven points. They're great in the red area. On Sunday, they went over two, over three, whatever it was. They didn't get into the end zone once. They had field goals. They got stopped. But, but watching it back, looking at the play calls there, there were only a, two or three times in the red zone where I thought, eh, I, don't, I don't love that play call there. Don't love that decision. Not the order of operations that I would personally go with. But on the whole, didn't have a problem with it. So I, I think that this is crazy. Tim Kelly was not a problem on Sunday. 